Hey guys, this is Game of Cow. Welcome to another Pokemon Traded Card Game History video. We're on to the world set for 2017, and this sparked a lot of controversy at the time, and is not the most popular of formats to go back to here compared to the previous set. Not because the diversity is any worse, but because this set came out and was legal for tournament play the week before Worlds happened. We did still have some time to get stuff, and of course people did manage to play test and whatnot with things, so it's a it's a less refined format we would say for, for Worlds, but we still knew a lot of the stuff that was good, and a lot of decks that came out in this set actually did make a really big showing at Worlds. Top 1 and 2 were both decks that debuted in this set, so yeah, that's, that's amazing to be honest, and I think a lot of the reason, I won't go into it too much until we actually get to the card, but a lot of the reason that people don't like this one as much is because God of War over here kind of completely upended the way that one particular matchup from the previous set came into, you know, light was played, and that is the Garbodor matchup. So, not that Garbodor becomes bad overnight or anything, but against Gardevoir, it really doesn't do anything. And uh, we'll get into why later on. There aren't really any promos to talk about here, but I just I was just looking through, you know, seeing the, the artwork for the stuff here, and I actually really like the artwork of this Champions Festival. I don't think I'd ever play it, and obviously this isn't the uh, English version, that's just how it is on, uh, on our scan stuff over here. This is the one that's in the uh, in the API, so that's what we have. But yeah, it's just a really cool looking card, and I wanted to show it because we love our artwork appreciation where it is possible. This is a really big set. There's like 186 cards in here or something when you include the the like hyper rare stuff down here. But there's still quite a lot of actual like cards to speak on here as well, and I think. Normally I would start with the trainers and we will get through most of those, but I would be remiss if I didn't like make a special mention of the two main GXs that came out of this set that ended up being the highest performers at Worlds. So let's start with that. We've got Gardevoir over here, it's a frail stage 2 for you know what stage 2 standards are, it's 230 HP, 240 or 250 is the typical for a stage 2, so this is on the low side, but it is more than made up for by everything else on this card. Uncommon weakness at metal, Metagross does exist but is not the most popular deck out there, so you're probably fine there. Retreat cost is fine, resistance is kind of nice because Evaltol decks can still be a thing, and Evaltol does kind of do okay against this card, so nice to have a resistance there. And yeah, all of its traits otherwise are great. Secret Spring is a once per turn attach of a fairy energy from your hand to any one of your Pokemon, so that's per Gardevoir, so the more of these you get into play, the more acceleration you have. And Infinite Force is pretty much the same X-Ball style attack we've seen for a while now. For starting at one Fairy Energy, you do 30 damage for each energy that's attached to both active Pokémon. This scales unrealistically quickly, especially when you have the uh, access to multiple Secret Spring, so you can end up having 4 or 5 energy on the Gardevoir out of nowhere. Double Colorless of course makes it 60 per, uh, as, you know, per DCE, so there is that. And any attacker that does not remove its energy after attacking is in a lot of trouble here. The reason this card is so good against Garbodor, despite being a stage 2, is because Twilight GX for a single fairy also like nerfs Garbodor because it shuffles 10 cards on your discard pile back into your deck. It is of course your GX attack so you do have to once per game it, but that effectively means that you can just play all of your items to aggressively set up and then Twilight GX to shuffle them all back into the deck and this was used very very well by uh, Diego uh, Casaraga I believe his, his second name is. Uh, used to win the World Championship this year, and he played like so much Garbodor, uh, against so much Garbodor going through. This this card is absolutely bonkers. The main thing that he ended up going up against in the finals was Golisopod, alongside the Garbodor from the previous set. 
Glycepod is a 210 HP stage 1. It's got a pretty good Wimpod in this set as well, where during the first turn it doesn't have a retreat cost. So you can just, if you start with it, you can get out to your uh, support attack or something like that and just get it out of harm's way. And you do want it to not be active when you evolve it, because Glycepod's first impression only does 30 damage for a grass energy, but if it was on the bench this turn and became active, it does 120 instead. And that's just very, very efficient, super powerful overall, and that is the main thing this card will do. Armor Press is also pretty solid for a Grass and Double Colors. 100 damage is not a ton, but it does mean you take 20 less damage next turn, so you've got a bit of a higher barrier to go up. You know, there's a bit of a, a hurdle for the opponents to cross. And speaking of crossing, Crossing Cut GX, its GX attack, does 150 for that same Grass and Double Colors cost, and then you switch this Pokemon to the bench, so that Presumably, next turn, you can then bring it back into the active and do the 120 or first impression. It's pretty good. This card sees quite a lot of play for quite a while. It will be used in next format stuff as well. And yeah, with Garbodor, it's a pretty natural pairing here. They don't really rely on abilities, so you can Garbatox in as well. And Floatstone gets played a ton because of that. So it ends up going to the bench quite often. The main piece of support that you would have with it, of course it is Guzma's main Pokemon, is Ace, so the Guzma card ends up coming in here as well, and we'll, we'll get to that as we talk about the trainers, because that's the next bit to do here. Ace Arola is the first one to speak on, and she is absolutely busted. If you thought AZ was good, just be able to pick up a Pokemon, discard all the cards attached to it, but just get the Pokemon back. So long as you have a damage counter on your Pokemon, this one is a uh, scoop up, so I like super scoop up, rather than regular scoop up. It just literally lifts the Pokemon and everything that's on it back into the hand. So this means all the energy you can then get back down again. It means you can uh, accelerate the stuff if you've got, say, Gardevoir. You can accelerate the fairy energy with Secret Spring. You pick up the choice bands and stuff again here if they're attached though, so you get to place them on something else. Absolutely ridiculous, and with this one set having VS Eco Legal as well, this is going to be absolutely insane. Uh, I'm planning on using this quite freely here. If you don't one-shot me, I'm gonna gonna pick up my my Pokemon, and it's gonna be great. Bodybuilding dumbbells is an interesting tool to have around. It makes Stage One Pokemon have 40 extra HP. Does not let them do plus 10 damage like Fighting Fury Belt does. So you know, bias obviously to the basics. But uh, it's fine, the stage 1s do tend to be on the bulkier side anyway. This does not exclude GX Pokemon, so you can say put this on the Glyspot, it hits 250 HP, which is pretty ridiculous. And yeah, it's, it's neat. It's a bit vulnerable to Field Blower, but if they're having to Field Blower this, they're probably not getting rid of something else that's uh, sticking as well if you play enough tools. So it's alright. We do get a reprint of Escape Rope, I don't think this changes legality, but it's there. Let's talk about Guzma, because man, this card is great. So one of the things we're losing to Rotation is Lysander, actually. So we don't have the straight Gusty opponent on the supporter card. What we have now is this instead, which gusts the opponent, and then if you do that, you switch your Pokémon as well. So it's almost like the old school Double Gust, except you choose both sides of it. This will increase the relevance of something like Tapu Koko as a as a pivot mon. So you really want that zero retreat in uh, in the deck if you can. Obviously, Floatstone can still be played as well, so that can be a, a pivot. But of course, this works very well with a Glycopod because if it's active, you then shove it to the bench while gusting one of their guys, bring out the zero retreat pivot, go back into the Glycopod, and now you're doing 120 damage again without having to have another Glycopod. Or if you've just got two of them, obviously works for that as well. Very, very cool. There's a couple of good artworks of this one. The uh, the regional one here is neat. The full art one was very cool for the time. I'm using the I'm going to use the alternate full art one, which is him like renouncing the skull membership thing. It looks really cool. So we'll we'll see that as well. Kiawe is terrifying. So this is the sort of supporter that we very occasionally see, or we sometimes see items that do this as well, where it's like you play them and then the turn immediately ends. For Kiawe, that effect means that you search your tech for up to four fire energy and attach them to one of your Pokemon. 
there is a fire type in this set that really needs four energy to do its attack, and that attack is exceptionally powerful. There is nothing scarier than going like Lele for Kiawe turn one and getting four energy on something to immediately prep it for attack on the first turn going first. It's absolutely ridiculous. Nowadays this wouldn't work nearly so well because you can't play a supporter going first, but it would still possibly be okay, just maybe a bit too slow now. Absolutely insane card though. Lana is intriguing, very good anti-spread card if you have a lot of water energy. Heal 50 from each of your Pokemon that has water energy on it. Also has an exceptional full art but it's not in this set, so that's kind of a shame. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's neat. It doesn't tend to see very much play, but if you're really worried about something like Decidueye, I guess, in, or like Tapu Koko, that sort of thing, in uh, the upcoming rotation, when Rough Seas actually rotates, then this is pretty okay. It does take up your support though, so that's good and bad, like you could search it with Lele, but also it takes up the support so you can't draw in the same turn, so I don't know. It's interesting. Mount Lanakyla, not really going to see a lot of play here. Increases basic Pokemon's retreat cost, but it's a passive stadium, so it's vulnerable to Field Blower as well as getting bounced by other stadium cards. Not that there are that many stadiums seeing play at the moment. Not every deck has got them. Quite a few top decks don't, but most of the top decks also don't get affected by this very much, so whatever. Olivia, uh, we have better, unfortunately. Search your deck for up to two Pokemon GX, put them into hand. That's fine, but GX is not the only things that you need to play, and it's just not quite good enough, to be honest. We can search out, like, the basics with... I mean, obviously, Ultra Ball is search out everything, but we can search out basics with Nest Ball if we need to. We can search out evolutions with Timer Ball. Maybe not both at the same time, but do you ever really need a basic GX and a stage 1 or stage 2 GX at the same time? I don't think so. So yeah. Plumeria is a very irritating card uh, to have in the format, but it is one of those control tool things. Keep this one in mind, we might see this later. Discard two cards from your own hand, and if you do, discard an energy from one of the opponent's Pokemon. It's kind of like, uh, it's not even really super energy removal, that sort of thing, but it's a energy removal with a definite downside to it. But uh, some decks can actually play with that very well. And later on, when we can better recycle stuff from a discard, yeah, this is going to get pretty annoying. Potown is a very neat looking card. Uh, if you evolve one of your Pokemon via you know, from your hand, you put three damage counters on the Pokemon that, that evolved. So, can be okay against evolution stuff. Again, not a ton of stadiums are getting played at the moment, so stuff like Gardevoir uh, will maybe have a hard time with this. Decidueye won't, of course, because they play Forest, but yeah, I don't know, it's, it's fine. It is potentially a good spread option, and there is a good spread card in this set, so maybe you could make something work with it, but I think its vulnerability to Field Blower again makes it a bit difficult for most decks to play. We'll see this kind of thing come in later though, the whole like put damage down, just a little bit more active than this. Rotom decks, the Poke Finder mode here, looks at the top four of your deck and then either shuffles them into the deck or puts them back in any order. So very slightly weaker than Pokedex, but it does let you shuffle if your top four are all really bad. That's kind of neat I suppose, but on an item in a Garbodor era, not really going to see play. Sophocles is kind of a cute supporter, but a little bit too weak really. Discard two from your hand if you do draw four cards. If this red, uh, I think there is actually a supporter that does this in Gen 8, if I remember rightly. That um, it was like Dan or something, one of the, the gym trainer dudes, uh, where you discard one or two cards from your hand, and for each one you discard, it draw two. Probably still too weak at that, but at least the flexibility makes it reasonable. This. If you are in desperate need of like many, many, many discards to the point where Ultra Ball and Sycamore both are not good enough for you, maybe you could play this? I don't know if a deck like that exists though. Super Scoop Up makes its return to the format, it's pretty good. Tormenting Spray is very silly. You choose a random card from the opponent's hand, you reveal that card, and if it's a supporter card, you discard it. 
that's very stupid to be honest, but some hands do just have like four supporters or something. So yeah, uh, Pepper was trying to think he uh, meme with this where it's like red card them to four, delinquent them down to one card and then tormenting spray them if that one card is a supporter, you get rid of it. But I just don't see that working personally. <laughs> There's a better card for that anyway in Zorua, whose whiny voice lets you just shuffle the card back into deck regardless of what it is, so yeah. Wait, this policy gets a new print here too, again kind of like the galaxy thing behind it. So this one is for me. And then we get Wick, who isn't very good to be honest, but is at least intriguing. Both players shuffle their hands into their deck and draw as many cards as they had in said hand. So if you have a 5 card hand, you shuffle draw 5. It never gains you advantage, it never loses the opponent cards, but I guess if the opponent, like this could theoretically be very slightly better than N in a clogged opening hand, where it's like the opponent's gone first, they've gone to like 3 cards in hand or something during their setup, and then you go, alright, I wick because my hand is terrible. But in those sorts of situations, you're probably not, like, too fussed about just playing the end anyway most of the time. So yeah, if end wasn't in the format maybe, but even then Judge is probably better, so I don't know. Finally, we have Wishful Baton. This uh, tool card is attached to your active, and if, well I mean you can attach it anywhere, but it only works when it's active, and if you get KO'd by damage from an attack, you get to move up to 3 basic energy from the Pokemon that was KO'd to one of your bench Pokemon. This is very weird. It's like inverse experience share, but it does move more energy in one go, which is pretty solid. And yeah, obviously Field Blower is a thing, and usually you're going to want Choice Band on stuff, but there is one deck in the distant future, I think it's in 2019 format, which actually did play this to good effect, and that is Blacephalon, because that card took three fire energy to attack, so it fulfills this condition pretty well of wanting free energy, but it also discarded energy from hand, not from the field, to do its big damage. And its damage cap was unlimited if you could have enough energy. So in order to power up extra Blacephalon, this was one of the ways to do it, to keep your board attacking. This was actually a card that got played. Anyway, distant history lesson aside, I just thought it was neat, so we can go over it there. On to the Pokemon proper. Unfortunately, the Butterfree is still not super great. You've got to shuffle it back into the deck for one energy and full heal all of your Pokemon. That is kind of cool. That is a GX attack after all on uh, a stage 2 Pokemon right now, that being uh, Primarina GX. But the problem is, even with Adaptive Evolution, and like Forest of Giant Plants technically, but Adaptive Evolution for post rotation. There's just not really a situation where this is going to be the good attack for the turn, right? I I just don't see it, so unfortunately not very good. There is a Vileplume that is irritating here, which uh, is funny because we're losing Irritating Pollen. We're losing the, the Item Lock Vileplume. This one, if it's active, prevents your opponent from attacking with basics, which is, yeah, pretty frustrating, but its attack is also really bad. And the problem is we don't have a strong enough hit and run attacker to really make this work. We do have a hit and run attacker in this set, but it hits for 20, so yeah. Uh, I don't think it's so super good. I think there might have been results for it. Uh, I would have to go look on Limitless again, but I want to say this got played in Expanded or something because you could play it alongside the other Valplume and just be very dumb with it. But yeah, not particularly good. There's a Heracross that has Guts. Guts is a fun ability, but the attack itself is bad. Artwork is really good though, so highlight it for that if nothing else. There's a Grass-type Dupida, uh, Dupido in here. I always call it Dupidoo because I'm, I'm silly. Uh, in this exact set, that means you could evolve into the Sun and Moon uh, Araquanid that prevents you from taking damage from Fire Pokemon. Fire Pokemon are somewhat relevant at the moment, but not relevant enough to sort of play this even in a uh, Fire Wheat deck like Decidueye. So yeah, not really too fussed about it there. This is the third set of the generation, so there is the obligatory Charizard. Uh, Charizard is in here as well. Uh, third or fourth sets seem to just always have a Charizard to sell the set. Uh, it's pretty much the same deal as before, it's not very good over here, that's me knocking over my drink, whoops. Uh, 
It's attacks are too expensive, although Kiawe is pretty funny for it, but how are you getting Kiawe like consistently enough with this? Getting stage twos in play, it ends your turn after all, so I don't know. Uh, the key thing to note about this one is for the very sort of close to the end of the error, its GX attack is actually relevant. Raging Out GX discards the top 10 cards of the opponent's deck. This is not usually the one that I saw played for it, but I had, on the ladder once or twice, seen this played in Mewtwo and Mew decks that could copy this from the discard and use that GX attack to mill the opponent out of the game. Usually it was like Makago, which was a lesser mill, but it was still like Makago ended up seeing play for that sort of thing, because it cost less energy and it actually had a good attack, unlike this thing. But, I mean, hey, if you want to do 300 damage, be my guest, right? Uh, you can KO literally everything in the game without right now. We've seen this already, so, sure. ho -Oh GX is the actual fire attacker from this set. Uh, well, one of the two. It is really, really good. 190 HP, so it is above that 180 threshold that Trampa hits. It's weak to lightning, not to water, so it's really good for fire decks to have a separate weakness. And it's got some pretty interesting traits to it too. Sacred Fire for a Fire Double Colors snipes 50 on one of the opponent's Pokémon. Not particularly strong, considering Ice Blade does that for two colorless energy on the Ninetales, but the Ninetales is a stage one, so I guess take it as you will. And it doesn't synergize with Phoenix Burn very well, because Phoenix Burn takes three Fire and a colorless energy, but it does 180 damage and cannot be used in consecutive turns. 180 is insane, that's what Tapu Bulu does when you discard all of its energy, and that means Choice Band gets it up to 210, Kakui on top of that would let you hit the Gardevoir for a one-shot, but it also is a basic fire type, so Volcanion EX can be used to boost this further as well, and yeah, it just ends up being very, very hard-hitting. You're not generally going to see its GX attack used, but if you do, Eternal Flame GX costs the same as Sacred Fire, Fire Double Colors, and it puts three in any combination of Fire, Pokemon GX, or EX from your discard pile onto the bench. There is a missing word in that for that that makes this a lot more powerful. Basic. You can put Evolution Fire GX and EXs into play as well, so one of the, one of the funny mean decks you could play with this is to Eternal Flame out Incineroars. Uh, and use the Incineroars for their efficient, like, 110 for one energy attack sort of thing. It's not very good, but this is the sort of way you would play it. It's very funny. The other attacker out of this set is uh, Salazzle, but just before we get to Salazzle, there is an expanded deck I want to briefly touch on here, with the, the Heatmore and the Raichu from here as well. Heatmore, I mean, you could technically play this in standard because we have Devolution Spray, it's just very clunky. Uh, Heat more for a double colorless energy, flips two coins and for each heads puts a card from the discard pile into your hand. So on average you're getting one, but we do have a the Victini from the previous set that lets you reflip as well, so that can be useful. And then there's the Raichu of Evo Shock. When you evolve into Raichu, you automatically paralyze the opponent's active. This creates a deck that was known as Shock Lock which uses Devolution Spray from Fates Collide or from Generations, not Generations, Evolutions, to devolve the Raichu every turn, and you just leave the opponent paralyzed every single turn, and you could use the Heat more in order to pick up the Devolution Spray to keep redoing it every turn. You would then go in with supporter cards, stuff like uh, Team Rocket's Handiwork or something, to mill the opponent out of their deck, and try and do it from there. Not a very good strategy, but oh my god was it annoying. So yeah, just want to sort of bring that up. In Expanded, this Raichu gets played with the Stoutland all the way back from Boundaries Crossed, which prevents the opponent from playing supporter cards as its ability whilst it's in the active slot. And then that uses a Memory Berry, or like Shrine of Memories, that sort of thing, in order to copy the black and white base set Lillipup who could use uh, pickup for one colorless and take one item back from the discard into the hand. So that then let you con constantly do the devolution spray thing. Yeah, so these two, these two were sort of played as a thing. It's very irritating, to be honest. So Lazzle GX is the uh, partner for ho -Oh, made ninth place at Worlds actually, very close to uh, top cutting, super good. 200 HP stage one, 
On the, the sort of average frail side, I suppose, is the thing. It's the same as uh, the Evolution GXs, so a little bit frail. Both of its attacks take two fire energy. One of them is just a straight 110 damage, that's not too bad. In fact, all three of its attacks take two fire energy, so that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, 110 for two, okay at the start of the game, but you really want to play this late game once you've taken prizes with ho because for two fire energy, Diabolical Claws does 50 for each prize you have taken. So as soon as you've taken at least three prizes, this does more damage than Heat Blast, but late game this will do 200 or even 250 if you have to play the seven prize game. And 250 of course KOs everything, so... Uh, key to note, it is not a basic obviously, so that means that Volcanion can't power it up, but you can still hit 230 with a choice ban, so that's not too bad. Queen's Haze GX discards all energy for the opponent's active Pokemon. Sometimes this will be really helpful, it's kind of like Umbreon in that way, where its GX attack was like sometimes good. This one only discards from one source, but it does discard all the energy, so yeah, pretty solid. Uh, for the water types, we have three that are kind of worth noting. Alolan Ninetales is the first one. This is our first safeguard Pokemon of the era. Prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by the opponent's GX or EX Pokemon. It's Luminous Barrier, but that's just because Safeguard was already used somewhere else, I guess. I don't know. Uh, obviously very strong because Alolan Volpix is really good, being able to do beacon stuff. Its attack is, like, not amazing, but with a Choice Band it does hit 110 for Water Double Colors. You're playing those sorts of energy in the deck anyway. So, yeah, this fits in very well with Alolan Ninetales stuff just in general. So... Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, Kingdra I just want to briefly touch on because I think this card would have been really cool like just a little bit ago. Uh, I think it's just a bit too awkward at the moment, especially if you were to try and play like Decidueye or something to make it work. Uh, 140 HP, 1 energy attack, so that's good for Kingdra, it usually does have cheaper attacks. Uh, Brian snipes 90 to one of the opponent's Pokemon that has a damage counter on it, so that's why you'd want to play like a Decidueye or something. And Tornado Shot for the one water discards uh, water from itself and then does 90 snipe 30. So it's Night Spear for one energy, but on a stage 2 with a discard. Uh, we're a little bit beyond this being completely great, to be honest. 140 HP is just so easy to take out for most decks at this point, so yeah. There's a, there's a world for it, I don't think this is that world. Likewise, the Gyarados I don't think is particularly great. Uh, if you played it, you could play it exactly this set with Archie before that rotates, because Venting Anger through a DCE does 50 for each Magikarp in the discard pile. But after that, this is going to cap out at 150 damage. Not going to be particularly impressive, so yeah, not really, not really feeling this one. And then finally on the waterfront we have Tapu Fini GX, who does have an alternate art where I think this is a promo one at some point, but it does have an alternate art that I think is kind of neat, so this is the one I use. 170 HP, no weakness or retreat costs, uh, no it's got a retreat, there's no weakness or resistance. Retreat of 1, so pretty solid there. And uh, it's, it's probably the weakest of the Tapus, but it does have a specific purpose. For one colorless energy, Aqua Ring does 20 and then switches it to the bench if you choose. You can leave the Feeny active. Uh, don't know why you would most of the time, but you can. Uh, for two water and a colorless, Hydro Shot does 120 snipe, but you do have to discard two water energy to make it work. I mean, water's got Aqua Patch, so there's at least that going for it. You could maybe max Elixir to it as well. So there are ways to accelerate to it to make that happen. 120 snipe, I mean we don't really see Shaman very often anymore, but uh, and that will rotate. But 120 is still pretty solid, so works quite well in the right circumstance. And then what you actually use it for is its GX attack. Tapu Storm GX for one water shuffles the opponent's active and all cards attached to it into the opponent's deck. If they don't have a bench Pokemon, you can't, you, well, you can use it, but it doesn't do anything. So it can't win the game. But what it can do is get rid of the opponent's best attacker. And for that reason, this card is a one of in uh, most Greninja decks. Because they don't have a GX attack otherwise anyway. And it's not the worst out there. Gives you an extra basic that you can play. Brooklet Hill can search it. Not too bad. Lightning types get the shaft again here. We will eventually get good lightning types, but it's not right now. Uh, 
On to psychic stuff, there's a survivor that increases the damage done by poison stuff, so if you're really dead set on using that uh, Toxapex from before, you could technically make its poison do 14 damage counters. Bit excessive, but whatever. I like the idea behind the Slow King here, uh, because we have a water type Slowpoke to Brooklet Hill with, and if you don't have any cards in your hand, you just get to ignore all the energy in the unarmed attack cost. Problem is, it's 110, so it's not really that great. But in the right deck, it's kind of cool. I like it, it's just like really hard to play. There's a Dusk Noir, which is kind of interesting, but not very good. If you uh, have it in play once per turn, you can make the opponent show their hand. And then if there's a basic Pokemon, you put it from their hand to their bench and put three damage counters on it. Synergizes with the Mind Jack ability, so or the attack here to do 30 plus 30 for each of the opponent's bench. So uh, not really much stronger than Zoroark to be honest, and it takes a Psychic Energy as well as a DC on a stage two. So yeah, just play Zoroark. But uh, you know, I guess it could like work with Zoroark, but then that's so clunky. Wouldn't really want to play that. Uh, no, the main Psychic type of note here is Necrozma GX. This 180 HP Psychic type basically shut down Ray, uh, Rayquaza GX if you were playing that still, and it was a topping deck, like top 16 worlds, so uh, relatively popular too, so was was a viable thing for it. Uh, Light Send basically prevents all damage done to this Pokemon by colorless Pokemon, so that's why it stops Rayquaza, because it stops, uh, stops it from damaging you, which is good. And then it's got one good attack and then one uh, we'll see it sometimes attack. The good attack is actually the GX one. Black Ray GX for free colorless energy snipes 100 to each of the opponent's GX and EX Pokemon. It's not affected by weakness and resistance so it can't uh, do 200 to the active but it snipes all of the opponent's board. So this is like the ultimate Rayquaza answer because all of their stuff is like Shaman, Hooper, Tapu Lele, ability stuff on the bench, right? Then the attack will sometimes see, and you could make an argument for this in Metagross to be honest, Prismatic Burst for free colorless energy does 10 damage. Rip. But you have to discard all the psychic energy from this Pokemon as well, and for each one that you discard, it does 60 more. So this attack will do 190 damage if you discard free psychic energy, but it's technically an unlimited cap if you keep going. This can be played with Metagross because Metagross can accelerate Psychic or Metal Energy from the discard to the active. So you can play this there, use it with a Geotech system, and you just have to play more Psychic Energy than you normally would in a Metagross deck, but it absolutely is a, a version that you could play. Uh, the way you would see this later is it can be a one-off tech in Malamar decks uh, sometime in the next uh, format. I forget, I think it is it Ultra Prism? I think it's either Ultra Prism or like Forbidden Light when that, uh, that card comes out. And yeah, Malamar is uh, Accelerate Psychic from the discard to the bench. So you can, you can use it there as well, I guess, if you want that sort of damage output. Mostly you would be using it because the GX attack is nice to have access to. One that's not good to have access to is Machamp's GX attack, however, because this is one of the worst GX attacks in the entire game. Doesn't even do one-shot numbers at 180, like that That can one-shot basic GXs, but still doesn't get all of them. Not affected by resistance, what the heck ever, dude. It's on a stage 2 and takes free fighting energy. This is arguably the second worst GX attack ever after Como, and I will stand by that, it is terrible. Uh, most of the other fighting stuff isn't super great, we do have a Lycanroc over here that is uh, good at killing basic evolution, uh, evolving Pokemon, 60 damage for a single energy to a basic, kind of neat, uh, otherwise not super good though, but you know Lycanroc GX is a thing, so there is that. Um, I want to say this Crabominable ended up seeing some play when stuff was weak to fighting, but very quickly died out because they're just better fighting types. Uh, Gutsy Hammer does 80 for a single energy, which is good, but it does 10 to itself for every damage counter that's on it, so it'll very quickly take itself out, kind of whatever. Uh, but no, the other actual good fighting type in here is Marshadow, and just in case you got sick of Night March and Expanded, this one basically revitalized the deck. Shadow Hunt is the main thing here. This is the lowest HP GX that ever gets released at 150. Everything else I think is at least 160, so 
yeah, kind of an interesting trivia, I guess. And uh, Shadow Hunt lets you use any basic attacks, uh, basic Pokemon's attacks from your discard pile, so long as you can pay for them. So, yeah, this ended up just allowing you to discard all of your Night Marchers and go Marshadow GX to copy one from the discard and do 240 damage, which is really stupid. So, uh, yeah, just in case you weren't already sick of Night March and Expanded, this makes it better. You can use this in Standard as well, of course, there are probably some decks that would like a fighting type tech in here. You could maybe even justify this in something like Vikavolt Tapu Bulu, because you could use it as a fighting attacker there. It depends if you need to hit that weakness, and sometimes you will. Uh, as far as its own stuff goes, Beatdown is a vanilla 120 damage or 2 fighting in the colors. A little bit too expensive, but a ve oh, very occasionally you might see it. And then it's GX Attack, Peerless 100 Blows GX. I love the name of this one. 50 damage times the number of basic energy on this Pokemon. So pretty much the same sort of thing as what uh, Lurantis GX did with Chlorosyph. Not amazing, to be honest with you, but that's okay, because it can use any other Pokemon's GX attack that you've got in the discard as well, so long as it's a basic Pokemon. As far as the Dark types go, because Dark always seems to get a ton of good stuff right now, Radicate is at least interesting. There was a Zero Retreat Rattata in the Sun and Moon base set. Not this one, but it's both of them are 40 HP, so you might as well use the Zero Retreat one. For zero energy, this guy does uh, 10 plus 50 if it has a tool attached. So put a choice band on this thing, it does 90 for 0 against uh, GXs and whatnot. That's a 2 shot on Tapu Lele, so I'll take it. Uh, yeah, very decent early attacker. There is a Raticate GX that comes out eventually that also has a 0 energy attack. The, you know, you can make some fun stuff happen there. The Grimer in this set has got Division, the Alolan Grimer specifically, so you get to search for another one out of the deck. And it's Heavy Ball Surgeable, just like the other one, so you can play this if you want the basic locking only ability from the Alola Muck. And you would play it because you have this Muck as well. 220 HP on the bulkier side for Stage 1. I think this might be the biggest Stage 1 that we've had so far, so that's pretty cool. And, well, two of its attacks are good. One of them is far, far too expensive for what it does. That one is Crunch, being too dark and too colours to do 120. Does auto discard an energy, so at least it's too shining with disruption, but that is just way too expensive. Uh, Chemical Breath is also very expensive and makes the deck clunky to play, but for a dark and double colours, it does 10, plus 70 for each special condition affecting the opponent's active. There was a Salazzle in the previous set that when you evolve into it, auto burns and poisons the opponent, which is another 30 damage that gets placed as well. So Chemical Breath over here actually is doing 180 damage in that situation, which is pretty good, because Choice Band that, and that gets to 210, that KOs a lot of stuff in the format. Very nice. The problem is how are you getting that much energy onto this thing, and that's where it sort of breaks down a little bit. But if you can manage that consistently, cool cut. For zero energy, one of the only zero energy, not the only, but one of the only zero energy GX attacks, Trihazard GX switches the opponent's bench Pokemon with one of their active, and then burns, paralyzes, and poisons the new active Pokemon. So, good disruption in the early game, gets an extra 30 damage down, forces the opponent to play Guzma or a switch card, that's a cool effect on a massive Pokemon here as well. Yeah, it's it's only difficulty is how you get the energy on it, otherwise it's really nice. Weavile is really good here as well, I am looking for this as a spread card, I might not be able to sort of work with it just now, but uh, Chip Rich, uh, Trainer Chip, Chip Richie nowadays does actually have a spread deck that uses this thing, it was kind of cool. Only 90 HP, but that does make it level ball searchable this set if you are still playing level ball, so I guess that's that. Uh, but its main attack is Rule of Evil. For one color synergy, each Pokemon that has an ability in play takes 60 damage. Does include your own, so you've got to be careful about your own, like Tapu Lele's or uh, the Krozmas and stuff like that, but it does a lot of damage in the right matchup, and even just sniping like two Lele's and maybe something else for 60, it's quite a lot of damage. Also, it doesn't have a retreat cost, so the deck is very mobile between this and Tapu Koko. It's, it's good. There's a dark right here that if the opponents use the GX attack, dark double colors 160. That's a lot of damage at least, but uh, a bit awkward still. 
Uh, Dark Eye GX did see some play as a turbo deck with uh, Dark Eye EX as well. Uh, and also saw a little bit of play as a recoverable Pokemon, like in, in Rayquaza. Because Skyfield getting bounced means that you lost a bunch of your Pokemon. And this one could just pick itself up out of the discard. Once during the turn before you attack, if this Pokemon is in your discard pile, put it onto the bench and attach a Dark Energy from the discard to this Pokemon. That part was good for the Turbo Darkrai. The uh, Rayquaza decks didn't play this energy because they played other types. Because you wanted to make a Turbo the energy rather than attaching it to this thing. Because otherwise it's not going to go anywhere from there. And it's GX attacks are like... Uh, I mean, it's GX attack is decent. It's regular attack is not amazing. Too Dark in the Colors for both of those attacks. Dark Cleave does 130 and is not affected by resistance. I guess that's fine. It's two shot numbers after all. Uh, Dead End GX KOs the opponent's active if they're affected by a special condition. There are a couple of ways you can get that to work, of course Salazzle being one of them, but I think it's a bit too clunky personally. And then we've already spoken about Gardevoir for the fairy stuff, but there are two other fairies in here that are worth noting. Diancy was seen in the world's winning deck alongside uh, Vulpix as your sort of setup mons. This 90 HP basic has a sparkling wish for one fairy energy that evolves one of your Pokemon in play from deck. So it's very much the same sort of thing as we've seen played with Spiritomb before. We played it with Jirachi when it first came out, the uh, Hidden Legends one. I believe that's what the set was called, the Gen 3 set. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good. We, we've seen this attack before. Kind of wish it cost a Colorless instead of a Fairy because it basically locks it into Gardevoir because nothing else really wants to play the Fairy energy for it. But it's cool. Also, anti spread attack with Diamond Storm that can sometimes work out in its favor. 30 damage, 30 damage healed from each of your Fairy Pokemon. That, that's okay. And then lastly we do have with Bombi. It's a bit difficult to play Cutie Flies because they've only got 30 HP and they only ever have 30 HP, but at least it's zero trait, so there is that. And uh, Rabombi lets you Professor's Letter once per turn. Search your deck for up to two basic energy, put them into hand. There is an Oracorio from the previous set that lets you do this with, when you bench it, but this lets you do it every turn. And I guess the idea was that, well, Gardevoir accelerates fairy energy from the hand. So have this thing on the bench, and you can accelerate to the guard with the guard wire every turn, and it's great. Bit clunky though, so not that doesn't see play, but it's cool, so I'll mention it. Then we have the dragon types. It's basically just Noivern. Uh, this is a one-set wonder thing, and we might see it just because of that. It's not the most pleasant card design out there, but it's it, and it does raise some alarm bells until you actually realize this card is nowhere near as good as size without 200 HP, zero retreat. So that's pretty good. It's on stage one on a dragon type, which is why it's good this set because double dragon energy rotates right after this, and both of its all of its attacks really would like to have that around. For a dark and a colorless, not a double colorless this time. Distort does 50 damage, and the opponent can't play items from their hand next turn. So the alarm bells immediately go off because that is quaking punch, but with a little bit more damage. But then again, you realize that it's not for double colorless and it's not on a basic, so it's a lot slower, it is a lot tougher to maintain. Yeah, double dragon energy is a thing this turn, but it doesn't get rid of the stage one aspect. It's still awkward to play, so it is not quite as devastating. That's not all it can do though, because its other two attacks take Psychic, Dark, and Colorless, but Sonic Volume does 120 damage and the opponent can't play special energy cards for their hand next turn. That is a really good thing to transition into later on in the game. Apart from just doing more damage, special energy is very powerful in a lot of decks right now. So that's a nasty one to have around. And then Boom Burst GX does 50 to each of the opponent's Pokemon. And that's it. That's still pretty strong though. Like the um, 50 to everything is quite nasty and you can do some funky plays with that too. So, it's cool. Yeah, it's definitely not as strong as the item locking stuff we've had before. And since basically all of that goes away, like I'm, I'm okay with that being in the format. Finally, I believe the last card that's worth noting is the Paragon Z over here. When you evolve into this thing during your turn, you may devolve each of the opponent's Pokemon by putting this card back into the hand. 
Uh, just play Espionix is my my thing with this, but I guess if you're playing a very heavy like stage 2 sort of evolving deck anyway, you could maybe mess up the opponent's stage 2 stuff with that. I just, no, it's on, we've had this ability sort of thing. I think we've had this ability before. We've definitely had it as an attack on the previous Paragon Z, but yeah, just play Espeon. It doesn't rotate, so it's still very, very strong. And that is this set. Burning Shadows has a lot of cards and quite a lot of good ones too. Uh, Gen 7 really starts off extremely strong. I think the weakest set that we have for a while is the next core set actually, but that isn't even the next one we're doing because Shining Legends comes out next and uh, gives us what uh, a couple of top players would say is the best card that ever existed. You'll just have to uh, tune in and find out next time what that is. Till then, uh, I don't know if we're doing one or two rounds of this, it depends what the guys feel like, probably after uh, our testing session on this one. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching, hopefully you have found this interesting, and until next time, when uh, it'll either be the battles or probably the rotation impact actually, because oh my god there's a lot of cards that rotate this time, like 70 or something noteworthy ones, lots to go over there. So till then, take care.